Good afternoon. Just a few blocks north of here, casting a shadow on the site of last night's protest, there stands a mural of Indianapolis poet Mari Evans. In one of her most famous poems, Ms. Evans joyously remarked, who can be born black and not sing in wonder? The joy, the challenge, and to come together in a coming togetherness, vibrating with the fires of pure knowing. I know that poem, and I love that poem. But I don't know what Mari Evans knows. I don't know the challenge of being black in this city. I don't know the challenge of being black in a country that was from its outset designed to privilege one race at the expense of all others. What I do know is that the black lives lost this past month have revealed once more the century old wounds that have never and will never heal. So long as we continue to believe that time alone will be sufficient to erase the effect of a system that often fails to provide liberty and justice for all. What I do know is that as stewards of the public's collective well being, we must do a better job of listening and acting before black communities in our city feel helpless. And what I do know is that the good faith efforts of peaceful protesters yesterday afternoon were overshadowed by, by violence that did damage to people, did damage to businesses, and ultimately did damage to our collective ability to wake up this morning with a focus squarely on the need for change. And it was because this message of peaceful protest was lost to violence that I reached out this morning and I invited some of those affiliated with yesterday's organized protest and asked them to meet with me and members of my staff in the mayor's office. Among the group was the mother of Dreshawn Reed and representatives from Black Lives Matter. In that conversation, we discussed many topics, many topics in which we agreed and topics in which we ultimately disagree. But in so doing, I made two commitments to these individuals and to the voices that they represent. First, I am committed to continued change on major issues related to community policing, transparency, and accountability and to the ongoing investigations into this month's police action shooting deaths. I am sincerely sorry that so many families in Indianapolis cannot trust their city leaders and authorities. And as we work toward that cause of progress in Indianapolis, including the long overdue deployment of body-worn cameras and civilian representation on a new 
Use of Force Review Board, I pledge that there is more we will do. And second, I made the commitment that the mayor's office and the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department remain dedicated to ensuring the safety of peaceful protesters. To that end, we have been told that event organizers intend to begin peaceful demonstrations on Monument Circle at approximately 4 p.m. this afternoon. And it is my hope that they will conclude by 7 p.m. In so doing, I have asked organizers to help facilitate the safe return of those protesters to their homes prior to nightfall here in Indianapolis. It is my hope that in these hours, their voices will carry forth a message that will ring loud and true in the moment. And through peaceful dispersal, they will be permitted, those voices, to reverberate through a solemn night of reflection. But let me reiterate what I said this morning. While the emotions that fueled last night's vandalism may be justified, the actions that were taken and the harm that it has caused are simply unacceptable. And it did nothing to further the cause of progress. For long stretches yesterday, we saw the best of what our democracy can stand for a community in peaceful demonstration. A activists who abhor seeing a protest turn destructive. Anguished voices lifted up in calls for change. But I am not blind to the fact that last night we also saw the worst manifestations of our own failings as a society. People who feel like their justice has been denied through delay. Our neighbors who are simply fed up and angry. Who feel that there is no possible civil recourse. Who feel that they are not heard when they are peaceful. And this leaves them to believe they have no choice but to act out. In any such person who is listening to me now, if they listen to me now, I say this, we are in a moment, we are alive in a moment of possibility. But there is no path forward that relies on violence and lawlessness as a vehicle for change. I will not deny your anger, for it is fairly earned. But it is my sincere belief that in moments of anger, we all, as humans, have a fundamental choice. The choice between love or hate. Indianapolis, it is my hope that as you gather in anger, you will leave your peaceful protest and return home by choosing love and in so doing you will indeed bring us one step closer to a city transformed through understanding and through positive change i'd like to introduce the chief of the indianapolis metropolitan police department randy taylor chief
so appreciate the mayor's words. I'll give you a recap of uh, what we uh, experienced uh, yesterday and yesterday evening. Yesterday afternoon, demonstrators appeared on the circle. We deployed our event response group, which are, is our ERG group, to ensure the safety of all those in the area. Officers quickly established a rapport with the group and agreed that we would provide them space to peacefully assemble and protest, which many of them did. Later, the group began to gather on the north spoke of the circle. They ignored our request to stay out of the street and not to block traffic. When the group made it to Ohio Street, their numbers quickly swelled from about 40 or 50 people to upwards of 200. There was an immediate escalation from a peaceful protest to vandalism and other violent acts. The group took multiple intersections blocking traffic. Officers got into position as quickly as possible in order to uh, block off the traffic to protect those in this group as they moved around downtown. The group began to splinter around downtown and we immediately started receiving widespread reports of vandalism and looting at multiple locations. As a result, a fire was started at the CVS store as well as in multiple dumpsters around the downtown area. We estimate at least 30 businesses were damaged last night. Reports are still coming in. Some businesses were occupied. And we received 911 calls for help from employees and patrons. When the protests became riots, we deployed chemical agents to disperse aggressive crowd. As we continued to monitor the situation around 3 a.m., we began driving through the downtown area and city streets making announcements to leave the downtown area or be subject to arrest. While some people did heed this warning, others did not. As things started to wind down around 4 a.m., we realized that 27 individuals had been arrested, five IMPD uh, patrol cars had been damaged, three officers had been injured, and we know of at least three protesters uh, that were injured, including one that sustained severe lacerations as a result of kicking in glass and was ultimately saved by the efforts of an IMPD officer who applied a tourniquet, saving that person's life. Our first responsibility is always to keep our residents safe. And we have a responsibility to intervene in actions of individuals threaten our city. We swear an oath to do just that. Fulfilling that oath to keep our community safe will continue to be our focus as we respect our residents' rights to lawful protest. Whether in our neighborhoods or during protests, violence is not the answer. And we hope that tonight our residents peacefully advocate for change, as is the legacy of our city. Now I believe we will open up to questions. As always, if you will put your name and station in the Q&A box, you will be called upon for uh, questions. The first one is Rafael Sanchez with WRTV. As mentioned, it is made available state police. Will you take the efforts of state police here? I'm sorry, I didn't catch the first part of the question. I said, Chief, good afternoon. The governor today in a message to Central Indiana said that he would offer the assistance of Indiana State Police to communities if they needed them. Have you been in contact with Superintendent Carter? Will you take the assistance of state police if needed? Yes, I met with uh, Superintendent Carter uh, yesterday, actually. Uh, we've always had a good relationship, uh, but that was offered if needed. And uh, hopefully uh, that won't be the case this evening, but uh, if that becomes necessary, we certainly would reach out to them. Abdul Hakim Shabazz, Indy Politics. Uh, Chief, one of the questions that pop, pop up is uh, the use of tear gas or pepper spray 
Uh, what exactly did officers uh, have to break out the tear gas and pepper spray last night? So I'm hearing uh, a couple different things that things were peaceful until the pepper spray was used and afterwards. So, what can you tell us about the use of pepper spray, sir? Well, our, our order to our officers was that was not to be deployed unless there were violent acts or vandalism or looting that was going on. And that's when we authorized uh, the release of both uh, pepper ball and tear gas. Sam Quinn, IBJ. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, my question is for the mayor. Um, what is the city doing tonight to help businesses who saw vandalism last night and prevent again this evening? Uh, Sam, you're going to have to repeat the question because I, I didn't okay. hear it. Sorry. Can you hear me now? I, I can hear you. Okay, my question was just what um, is the city planning tonight to help businesses who um, were vandalized last night and prevent some of those same uh, events happening tonight? Uh, I'm sorry, Sam. I'm, I'm having difficulty. You're, you're coming in and out. I can't hear the full context of your question. Sam, we'll come back to you. Okay, I apologize. I, just, I, just, I can't hear the question. Travis Robinson, Wish TV. Yeah, I, uh, I, I know you were saying earlier um, that you're hoping that the protesters are out of there by 7 o'clock tonight. Um, I, I know that can't always be guaranteed, and we've been seeing reports that some of the damages that are happening are from people who aren't even involved in the initial protest. They're just people that are out there or from out of state, out of the area. I mean, if things do get a little hectic tonight, what's the plan? Well, uh, first and foremost, I want the uh, protesters to have the opportunity to have their voices heard. Uh, for an extended period of time between the hours of four and seven. I have asked the organizers of the event uh, to, um, uh, at, at the hour of seven, uh, request that uh, all the protesters who have gathered uh, to have their voices heard return home peacefully. Uh, I am hopeful that that is precisely what happens. Um, in the alternative, uh, if they choose to stay, um, then certainly IMPD uh, would probably stand down for a while, uh, but at some point uh, it will be made clear uh, that if they uh, uh, remain uh, of their own volition uh, in violation of our request uh, to return home, uh, they may very well be uh, subject to uh, arrest. Uh, but uh, again, I want to reiterate uh, that uh, we firmly believe that Indianapolis is a community uh, that understands peace, understands progress, uh, and one unfortunate night won't change that. Russ McQuaid, Fox 59. Good, year. Good afternoon, Mayor and Chief. I wonder if you could uh, talk with us a little bit about the preparations for downtown this afternoon. Last night, there were flying scooters through windows, bike racks, et cetera. Have you set out any directives for businesses downtown or DPW crews to get those type of potential flying projectiles off the street? And have you noticed that a lot of people are preemptively holding up their buildings if they're attempting to uh, hold off a hurricane? Yeah, I would say I'll, I'll let the chief answer as well. Uh, we have been in contact with all of our uh, city partners, uh, particularly DPW, uh, and I do believe that they have uh, made a Herculean effort to um, es essentially eliminate uh, any asset that is in the public right of way uh, that has no, uh, uh, no legitimate reason for being there. In other words, clear the area uh, uh, so that the public right-of-ways remain open uh, and accessible at all times. 
I do, uh, I do appreciate, uh, unfortunately, the fact that uh, some uh, assets in the public right of way uh, became uh, problematic uh, and used in destructive ways. So we're ha we're hoping to avoid that this evening, which I hope will be yet another step in making this evening uh, safe and peaceful, uh, as last night was not. Chief, you want to add anything to that? Uh, so let me reiterate, uh, I was down here for a number of hours myself last night, noticed that really a, a far majority, what I, I perceived as a far majority of the protesters uh, did operate within guidelines, uh, no issues uh, really with anything they did. It was really a small group uh, that took off uh, and then started destroying uh, property and using different things that they either brought down or, or found near them and, and used those to to uh, damage property, but uh, I believe we are prepared uh, this evening. We've got uh, uh, groups on standby uh, in case uh, uh, things go south. But of course, our hope is that uh, things will go peacefully and they and that we won't really be needed. I'm going to read aloud Sam Quinn's question. Is the city taking any steps to help businesses that were vandalized last night? And are there plans in place to try to prevent vandalization this evening? Yeah, we are reaching out to all businesses in the downtown area, trying to, of course, this is in a very preliminary sense, trying to assess the damage uh, that was uh, uh, done last night. Uh, and we will work uh, vigorously with any downtown business um, to see that they are uh, capable of getting back up and running. Um, it's been a difficult several months uh, for businesses throughout Indianapolis, including those downtown, because of the effects of the pandemic. And whatever uh, destruction uh, or vandalism occurred in places of a business last night uh, has only exacerbated that challenge. So we remain full partners with businesses, uh, and we are hopeful that um, tonight uh, the protests will be peaceful, that they will remain peaceful, and that uh, those who choose to participate will simply go home uh, after the protest is over uh, in a peaceful way. Let me also clarify uh, the fullness of, or the lack of fullness of an answer that I previously gave when I was asked what happens if people uh, do not go home uh, at the request, at my request uh, in the hours of seven to eight, or uh, choose to uh, uh, stay downtown. Um, being downtown is a First Amendment right, and, and that is where I have uh, need to, to, to uh, clarify my answer. If individuals stay downtown uh, and engage in any kind of illegal conduct or criminal activity, vandalism, uh, or the like, uh, then they will be subject to arrest. The mere fact of staying downtown uh, is not a, a crime in any sense of the word. But I do hope, and I want to reiterate this, that in order to avoid any confusion, uh, any misunderstandings, after the peaceful protest has been concluded, the safest thing that all participants can do is peacefully return to their homes with their message having loudly been heard and hopefully resonating around the community with their active participation in this important community conversation having been finalized, that they would return home to the safety uh, of their own neighborhoods uh, and that we will avoid the unfortunate circumstances that occurred in Indianapolis last night. Rafael Sanchez, WRTV. Mayor, you said you met with uh, members of Sean Reed's family this morning and others. And in your remarks, you said that uh, you pledge that more is to come in the way of changes. In global terms, what more can you do to address this issue in our city? And I, sir, I have a follow up to my question. Well, Rafael, um, 
we will continue the hard work that we've been doing over the last four and a half years. And that includes uh, improving uh, police training at the academy. We have, been, we have uh, added implicit bias training as part of every police officer's um, curriculum. Uh, we have embarked on uh, return to community-based beat-oriented policing. Uh, we have more officers uh, on uh, the beats than ever before, which I think goes a long way toward improving the relationship between neighborhoods and the residents of those neighborhoods and their community uh, police officer. Uh, we announced uh, earlier uh, just this month uh, that uh, by uh, sometime in uh, fall of 2020, uh, we will be introducing uh, body-worn cameras for uh, for most all, if not all, officers. Uh, that will, I think, improve transparency. Uh, it will protect the public, and it will protect police officers. And then, most recently, uh, we announced uh, the efforts uh, to create a uh, new use of force review panel or review board that would include civilians. And I think that the adding of civilian participation uh, will be meaningful and certainly will make uh, that particular reform more credible. So uh, it's not as if we have not spent the last four and a half years uh, doing everything we can uh, to improve the relationship between the community uh, and law enforcement here in the city of Indianapolis. And I would say that at many stages throughout these last four and a half years, we have seen a discernible improvement in those relationships, but it is the unfortunate circumstances that surround um, police action shootings, uh, and then of course exacerbated by the nationwide conversation that is taking place. Let us not forget that Indianapolis is alone in this regard. I'm told over 20 to 25 cities experience violence uh, over these last two or three days um, since the unfortunate uh, fatality murder uh, of uh, the individual in uh, uh, Minneapolis. And so uh, while we have made progress, obviously last night's uh, events remind us that more needs to be done and more will be done. This concludes our press conference. Thank you all.